This is the transfer case actuator assembly in a 2004 Toyota 4Runner. This uh, actuator is new. I just purchased it on eBay. Um, they're only $200 on there and I'm just using it as a simulation uh, because I want to show you what these rods, how they function on here. There's an upper rod and a lower rod. Um, right now this is pointing towards the back of the vehicle, but I just did that so I could spin it around and show you. I also can show a video. It'll take me a little bit longer to make, but how you can replace this actuator without dropping the transfer case. It will involve some clocking. You have to have all the, these shafts have to be in the right position to clock them. They're already inside the vehicle, so they do have to be clocked properly. But to do that, there, it's not real hard, but there's some gears in here and there's actually some um, a blue and a gray indicator. And I'll show those in a picture here. There's a blue one that's on top and there's a gray one on the bottom. So the blue one on top clocks your center diff lock, which is this bottom one. And the gray one underneath indicates the position of the high and low. Now this is the V8 version. So the V8 version should have a top rod and a lower rod. And that V8 version has all time four wheel high and um, or you can put it in low gear. So I'm gonna simulate this right now. I'm gonna first uh, turn on the center diff lock, which should move this rod. And then four wheel high and low should be this rod. So let me first, right now we are in four wheel high and the vehicle is in neutral. And I just have that board back there to try and make a white background so you can see this. Okay. This is the uh, center diff lock. That brings the lower rod in. If I remove the center diff lock, it pushes it back out. Now I'm gonna simulate the four wheel low. I'm in four wheel high right now. That is four wheel low. So you can see the top rod gets pulled in. And we're going back to four wheel high. I'm gonna go back to four low and then center diff lock. This is four wheel drive low. And this is the center differential lock. And now I'll switch it back to four high. There's four high. And now I'm gonna release the center diff lock. And we're back to the normal position. So this is now the normal position um, and like I said, I'll simulate the two one more time. This is center diff lock. Okay, one second, my vehicle shut off. Well, I left my vehicle on too long, so the battery's low. But, so this is for your center diff lock, and this is for your four-wheel drive control. And what I'll do is I'll post another video that shows how to disassemble this actuator, and then you can reassemble it after you install the two rods. So the rods will not come out of your transfer case unless you disassemble the transfer case. But the rods are sticking out um let me show you on mine i have a piece of cardboard in the way right here this is my top rod here and this is my bottom rod here this rod right here is the four wheel drive high and low and this is the center diff lock so the center diff lock when you take apart this assembly is going to be the first set of motors and then the four wheel drive and low is the second set but the way you're going to do this is the length of these shafts you're going to have to position them 
and then clock everything. But you do that once you disassemble all this. Um, and it's a little bit complicated, but I'll try to make a video that explains it really well. But the clocking is the most important part, which these are just, um, these are what give you your indicators inside the cab, what position you're actually in. And it will allow the vehicle to run correctly and be in the right position. But these two indicators, like I said, there's a blue one and a gray one. The blue one takes care of the center diff lock and the gray one takes care of the four wheel low. And I'll again, put links to those and show you a close up picture.